One size fits all? My art. So as you just saw, when I did the ice in resin video, a lot of you guys suggested that I should try dry ice. So I did some investigating, and I found some. Now finding dry ice around here can be a bit difficult. You can't just go down to your local supermarket and grab it. You've got to go to a special ice works that make it. But once you do find it, it's super fun to play with. Now we all know what happens when we drop dry ice into water and we're about to find out what happens when I drop it into resin but before we do that I think there's some other experiments we can try. So I raided the kitchen and this is what I found. I've got some white vinegar, some milk, mayonnaise, cooking oil, some cola, some yogurt and of course it wouldn't be Australian if I didn't have Vegemite. Now there is one other experiment that I've been wanting to try this is 100% alcohol, and when you drop dry ice into alcohol, it super cools. And once you've got that super cooled liquid, you can put things inside like these gummy snakes, and then once they've cooled down, you can shatter them into a thousand pieces. Now we'll do that experiment a bit later, but for now, let's start with the milk. If I had to take a guess, I'd say that this milk's probably going to behave the same way as the water. Wow, I did not expect that at all. All that gas is trapped inside these bubbles. So as soon as we pop them, all the gas is gonna come out. Well, that made a bit of a mess. I'm glad we started with the milk though. Time for round two. This time I'm gonna use a silicon mat. Let's try the cola. I wonder if the carbonation in the water will have any additional effect. So you can see all that gas is being trapped in the bubbles just temporarily and it just keeps popping out, kind of like a steam train. Well that one turned out pretty much as expected, so let's do the next one. Next up, white vinegar. Now I really have no idea what to expect with this one. What do you guys think? Same as the water and the cola? It looks very similar to the water, maybe a bit more violent. Next I think we'll try the mayo. Not too sure how well this will work, I think I might have to force it in there. Well, it's not really doing much. 
You add some more over the top. I wonder if we're just building up gases and all of a sudden this will just go pop then I'll be covered in mayo I don't want to be covered in mayo might stand back well it's been five minutes and we got nothing well that was pretty uneventful that one and don't worry, I'm not throwing this out, I'm saving it for later. I think we're going to have the same reaction with the yogurt, so let's knock this one out real quick. It smells like passion fruit. Mango and passion fruit. Mm -mm. Oh, a bit better reaction. Nothing crazy though. We are down to our final two, Vegemite and cooking oil. Now since we've had two boring ones, I think we should do the cooking oil because I reckon the Vegemite is going to be a bust. Alright guys, what's your prediction for this one? Do you reckon it's going to be more like the water or more like the milk? Wow, neither. We're just getting a heap of bubbles, but we can't see the actual gas, like the smoke. Now there is a good chance that this oil could be super cooling. Let's take a look and see how cold it is. We are minus seven, minus eight degrees Celsius or 30 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty cold. It's now time for the last of our foods, the Vegemite. Now, like I said before, I think this one's gonna be a bit uneventful, but hey, you never know. Let me know in the comments if you've tried Vegemite, and if you have, let me know if you liked it. It's a bit of an acquired taste. Me, personally, I absolutely hate it, but Nicole loves it. I think what I might do here is drop the ice down the bottom and then fold the Vegemite over the top. Okay, I've made a nice seal around the back there. Hopefully we can build up some pressure and get a little pop. Nah, I think all we're doing is making really cold Vegemite. So those last few experiments weren't very exciting at all. So I think it's time we tried super cooling some alcohol. Now if any of you guys are going to attempt super cooling a liquid, please be very careful. Because even a splash of this can give you some frostbite. So now that the alcohol's in, we're going to add the dry ice. Now once we add the dry ice, we're going to wait for all the bubbles to disappear and then we know that the liquid is super cooled. Once that's done, we'll drop in the gummy snake and see if we can freeze it. It's been a few minutes now, let's check on the temperature. Minus 53 degrees Celsius. Minus 64 Fahrenheit. Now we're getting super cooled. So you can see now that all the bubbles are starting to settle down and it's now time to drop in our gummy snake. So we'll just leave that in there now until it freezes. Okay, I think we're hard enough. Let's give it a smash. How cool was that? 
that. It was definitely worth the wait. It's now the moment we've all been waiting for. Dry ice in epoxy resin. Just like the first ice experiment, we'll drop in some blue alcohol ink and then wait for it to heat up. I'm also going to transfer it to this moulding container so we can get a better look. For the resin experiment, I'll be swapping out my face shield for my respirator. Starting to get warm now. Shouldn't be too long. While we're waiting for that resin to heat up, I wanted to take a second and thank you guys for being here. I really appreciate your support and I also wanted to give you a sneak peek of next week's build video. I got myself the Beatles Yellow Submarine. Now if it's your first time on my channel and you think that's something you might be interested in, please consider subscribing. I put out new videos every week. Now let's get back to the action. Alright, it's go time. Let's do it. Let's just drop it in. Oh, check it out. Straight to the bottom. And we're bubbling. Now it's a race to see if the resin on top will set and keep those bubbles in. Check out the smoke effect we're getting on top here. All right, I think I'm gonna stand back just in case something happens. So that was pretty fun to watch. The way that resin heated up and then cured over the top, slowing down the bubbles, we ended up with one little pinhole on top there, just allowing the gas to escape. But I think what we need to do is go bigger. We're gonna go more resin and more ice. I'm going to try and wait as long as I can this time. See if we can get that resin to seal up. There's just such a fine line. Definitely getting close now. Alright, I'm going for it. All right, I'm going to stand back. Well, we didn't get a bang, which to be honest, I'm pretty happy about. I think we'll let this cool down, we'll pop it out and we'll take a closer look. Our castings have now cooled down, so let's pop them out and take a closer look. So 
here's the first one we did. It turned out pretty cool. I thought it was going to break through the bottom, but it didn't. All we got was a little pinhole on top here. If you turn it upside down, it kind of looks like a tornado. And here's the second one. This one looks amazing. These voids here almost look like the galleries inside an ant's nest. And once again, we didn't break through the bottom, but we do have a couple of holes on top. Now that could be to our advantage, because I'm thinking with this one, it might be cool to put it in the vacuum chamber, put a different color resin in, and try and suck it into all those voids. What do you guys think? Do you reckon I should do that? Well, that's all for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.